Hey everyone. So apparently my webcam does not want to work tonight. So I guess we're doing it without it. So weird. Let me play about a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's see. This one doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's life. We're doing it without a webcam. Welcome, everybody, to the stream. Uh, we're going to do a slightly something a little bit different with uh, the people on my Discord. We're talking about uh, off the grid vehicles. So every week we have a, a prompt. And this week's prompt is off the grid vehicles, which is basically big four by fours. And I am going to do something like that. And I want to go in two different directions. And one would be more of a Mad Max post apocalyptic looking sort of thing because I am playing a whole bunch of Days Gone. So there were some uh, Christmas winter sales and I had my eyes on, on Days Gone for the longest time. And yeah, I got it. And I'm pretty much... Uh, <laughs> you are the people that my Discord. Yeah, well, I know. But there are some people who are uh, not part of the Discord. Who should be, because it's uh, really fun. But yeah, returning to, to, to Days Gone, I am a, a huge, <laughs> huge coward when it comes to horror games. I, I'm, I'm really not doing that well with them. So this, uh, this game is quite scary for me. So it took me a while to get into it, but once I got into it, I really enjoyed the, the constant fear of being attacked by huge hordes of zombies. So yeah, I thought, uh, let's do a, a sort of vehicle that is that would feel at home in this uh, zombie-infested world. And then also, another one that I want to do is more like Mass effect -y. But in the meantime, if you have any sort of uh, questions, stuff like that, of course, we will take a break from this drawing and try to answer that. Mm. Yes, people should join the Discord because it is fun. And they're really fun people there and everybody's helping each other. It's always nice to see that everybody's giving a, a, a feedback. Okay. So it's so I want this one to be sort of like a a pickup. Sort of like a, a transformed pickup, which might be actually smart. If I open my browser and look at some cars here that I have. We can do like a asymmetric grid as well. Like almost bring a, a little bit of uh, cyberpunkiness in it as well. Which could be sort of like the, 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 the wastelands outside of uh, Night City. Which I still have to play. So I, <laughs> I was one of those people who pre-ordered Cyberpunk and then it came out and I installed it. I sort of realized that my computer is not strong enough to run it. So I just parked the game because right now, like even if I wanted to play it, I couldn't. I, I did I did order for a new video card, but uh, nothing is in stock. So Robert is definitely not going to play Cyberpunk anytime soon. Okay, let's pop back here. 
Let's see what we have. Let's see. Maybe a big, some sort of block like this here. I could have. Oh. Like that. Okay, so maybe we could add a couple of uh, solar panels on top of that. But is, it is supposed to be oh, is. it is supposed to be an off the grid vehicle, so we want it to be self sustaining, or at least sustaining the people that are in it, right? Uh, question, Robert, are you using any reference or is pure and simple improvisation? No, I am. So what I'm using is reference. Let me let me bring in the Discord for a second. So we have these pictures that were posted on the Discord by, I think, Jonathan Dreesen, you were that, right? And I'm looking mostly at the yellow one and the green one. Somebody forgot to turn off the this one. Correct. And then I'm also looking, let's see if uh, I have open. I'm looking at some Mad Max stuff as, whoa, I pushed this one, not enough. But here we go, I'm looking at some Mad Max stuff for inspiration. And also, as I said, Days Gone. Uh, but Days Gone doesn't have too many cars, it's, it's mostly bikes. So I'm, I'm concentrating more on, on a combination of Mad Max and those pictures. Uh, external fuel tanks, I do like that. So they are sort of like tied one and two. That's, that's a good idea with the external fuel tanks. Uh, Aditi, I am starting out. Should I learn traditional sketching or digital sketching? What are the plus and minuses of both? Uh, well, there isn't really a difference. You learn sketching, and then if you do it traditionally or digitally, that is up to you. But uh, sketching is sketching. So you should learn sketching and not concentrate if it's traditional or digital. There are some Minor differences, but I would say just, just learn sketching. <laughs> Light disc between blasphemy. Well, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. I am I'm totally a, a boomer when it comes to Discord. It's just it's it's something that I I I don't know. I was too never really got into Discord until like. A bunch of people on YouTube kept on asking me to I don't, to, to start a Discord channel, so I did. But I, I don't really know what I'm doing, so please don't don't burn me because I have a white theme for it. Uh... <laughs> but okay, so, so okay, I, I'm going to use white theme. I, I I got chastised by the girlfriend that I used uh, YouTube or I don't know which uh, thing. But I also used white there. For some reason, I just I use white everywhere. My my eyes are messed up, and my eyes like it like everything to be super bright. So I I can't help you there. It's just it's how, how stupid my eyes are. They they really like the the, the super bright stuff. Uh, Jonathan, the recent is snail. I think he's snail master. I was just I know snail master is Dutch, and Jonathan Jason. The Dutch name, I don't remember his exact name. That's another thing, I'm not good with names. Okay, I do like this, by the way. Um, I would say, let's let's not go fully Mad Max, let's give it some sort of, of satellite thingy so it can communicate with uh, people. Dan Matthew Robin, where do we get the link for the Discord server? It's it should be oh if it's not in the description of this one, like every other video other than this one has it, and this one will have it once I uh, once the, the the live stream is done and I, I upload it. So in general, if you just uh, go to my 
channel and click any, well, I would say uh, rel late later video, not the super early ones, but one of the ones that I made in the past six months, months there should be a, a link to the Discord. Yes, I knew his snail master. Okay. So if the driver seat is on the left side, I'm going to add a grill on the right side. And we're going to add like this sort of slit protected by maybe some sort of armored thingy there. Okay, and then here we have the grid. A grill, not good. And also mirrors. Hey, Vicky! <laughs> Welcome to the stream, Vicky. Watch how you doing. Nice to see people here. Okay, so keep on throwing, uh, keep on throwing ideas if you have. We we, we incorporated this external tanks, which I'm also I didn't really think about refilling. How do we refill those? And if, if the tanks I keep up there, then this could be some sort of locker down here. Let's, let's do lockers there. And then we should have just some slight uh, leather sort of thing going up to the entry door. Okay, I think I can live with this. Uh, by the way, uh, guys, I forgot to ask, is the music too loud or loud enough? Tell me if that needs to change. Seem to always forget that part. Okay. I think I can make this a little bit bigger now. Well, it's not that big. Okay. And then quickly let's draw over this. Ah, line work. Let's see where do we start. Let's just start with the door. And I'm not gonna go with super clean line work, so I'm gonna be a little bit messy. But should be should be fine. Uh, you can't hear the music, but you don't miss it. Okay. Well, it's it's still good to have a little bit of music. So let me just adjust it just slightly. And then if it's too much, you you guys can tell me. I can turn it down again. I mean, for, from time to time, I will fall silent because. Uh, I will probably will be concentrating quite a bit, so it's it's good to have something on the background. Okay, so window would be here, and then if I want the grids, the grids would be probably running a little bit over the window. something. Like Um, good, so now we have music as well, nice little synth wave going with our futuristic theme for today. There we go. Uh, 
we need some sort of an area where this is attached as well they're not just floating in the air so let's think about that and then that would be probably drilled by these two sides and then this side if the driver sits we would have the uh, plating the armor plating where it slit right in the middle for a driver to look out through something like that and then here we can also add a couple of screws or something just suggesting uh, sort of a construction so each yeah. and maybe here so there we go then the roof of the vehicle something like that okay <laughs> yeah i think we should have uh, so first let me erase this little part here for each bar and then we also need horizontal bars which cross these so i'm gonna merge this down new layer and then let's draw the horizontal bars and i feel like three should be enough uh, hey mozam welcome uh, to the stream there we go so yeah you can you can take this time, especially uh, dear stream people, and also come up with some more vehicle for this week's prompt. Because this is actually quite a fun one. I like this. I never really thought of these sort of off-road, off-the-grid vehicles too much. It's a relatively new term for me too, so I'm also coming up with my own rules for it. Okay, this would be the front. And obviously I didn't go with, maybe it would have, would have been more interesting if I'd gone for a truck that actually exists and then turn it more into this semi-Mad Max, semi-post-apocalyptic truck. But I, I just came up with something of my own. Uh, Manuel, what, what I think a bike will be a nice addition. I think uh, about people, these and these and horseback and the good ones will be quite there. Okay, I actually agree with that. Uh, hi there, I keep losing my cursor when using sketchbook. The little cross here are easy to lose. Any tips for that? Not really. <laughs> I think I think somewhere in the edit preferences. I think somewhere here you can set up your here. Uh, display crosshair. I thought you could make that bigger. But apparently not. But you can also go with uh, always display brush outline. So that should help you, especially if you're with a, with a bigger brush. That should help you see where it is. And also, like, maybe a tip would be to, whenever you, you feel like you lost your brush, just make it bigger. Uh, it should bring it back. But yes, if I stop for a second, what we could do, take this away, and let's return to our sketch here a little bit. So I could sort of add oops, new layer. I could add sort of a bike rack here. I'm going to be honest though, I'm not good at drawing bikes. I would need 
a reference for the bike. So I'm just gonna go to Pinterest, my friend again. And I'm going to say the motocross bike. Because I feel like a motocross bike would make the most sense. I like this. Okay, copy image and just paste it in here. So we're gonna cheat a little bit now. And I'm going to So what I'm doing now, I'm trying to match sort of the perspective of the truck and fit this back in here. Make it bigger. Push it together a little bit. Like that as well. Okay. And now just paint over it a bit. That should be small. Mm, this should be bigger. Okay. Two. So I have to make up the side of the bike, but it shouldn't be necessarily a problem once I have the outline hidden. Maybe I shouldn't have erased there, so I can also see what I'm drawing. And now I can take this away a little bit. There you go. So that was a good little guide for us. And we just continue looking at our reference now. <clears throat> uh, hi, Robert. Cheers from Spain. Thank you. From Spain. I'm a pro designer and I learned so much with you. Well, I'm happy to hear that. It's, um, yeah. Technically, I'm not even a pro designer anymore, even though I studied it and I, I like it a lot. But I do much more stuff that is not, not related to product design. Like, I almost can't call myself a product designer soon because I keep on doing other stuff. Uh, Jonathan, I'm working on a buggy at the moment, but it's more Mad Max than off the grid. I'll post it in this card. Cool. Looking forward to seeing that. I think, I think Mad Max is, is fine for that topic as well. You don't have to go for off the grid. Okay. I think, I think this is relatively enough information for the bike. Just make sure to have some proper off-road wheels for it. That is definitely important. And we want the chain here and then proper off-road wheels in the front as well. And then I can turn back my car, bring up its opacity. And then try and fit. Okay, I think I feel like the bike needs to be a little bit bigger, something like that. And this one can go away. So I need to erase everything under my bike. And then maybe add sort of a structure, a steel frame that is holding my bike. There we go. That I think that's a that's a good addition. I'm gonna merge the two together, bring down the opacity again, and let's return to our inking layer, shall we? Let's see if there's any new comments. You want me to keep drawing? I'm drawing. That's good. <laughs> Keep on drawing and drawing. <laughs> yeah, I try to attempt to be a product designer or design engineer, but want to do both in my life. So then sketch from. 
Thank you for it. Well, yes, I'm, I'm very happy that, that I, I managed to inspire you. And both product designer and design engineer are really cool uh, jobs, careers to aspire for, I would say. I really enjoy. It's just really fun coming up with uh, different solutions for problems that people have in their everyday lives with products. So I think I think if you have a, an affinity for stuff like that, you will you will surely enjoy it. Okay. You don't need, I don't want this to be super precise. So I'm just, by the way, sorry for the, the, the constant rotating, but it's just, it's just how I work. Should this be a little bit lower? I feel like this could be slightly lower. Let us bring these just a little bit lower because like if it, I don't want it to be too low, obviously, but I think I think this should be enough. And then one, two, three, four, and five. And then we can add a little roundings here just to go along with the construction. And then we can add one more here. like that and then we close it up there love back to india narayanan uh glenn uh, on your tablet are you able to use your not drawing hand to rotate the page yes that's uh, yeah sadly my 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 webcam decided to not work today which I don't seem to be able to fix, sadly. But I have set up the buttons on my uh, Cintiq, so I have rotate there and pan there as well. Basically, I have my Cintiq like this. Here is the screen. And then I have a round button here and these buttons here. So, and with this one, I can pan around, and with this one, oh no, that, that rotates the thing. So, with the, with the pan one, I can rotate as well, and I can pan as well. So, it's a, it's a relatively good setup. But if not, I have my keyboard just underneath it, where I can do all these things as well. So, we're safe either way. And I feel like if you have this, then you would need... Uh, a handrail as well, which I'm going to attach here. I need a smaller razor. So it's just something when you want to climb up this uh, ladder, so you can hold on to this handrail. here as well sort of a construction yeah not everything is too perfect okay let's finish up the front of this vehicle and then move to the back of it here and here are the areas where we have the welding going on and then connecting there. Uh, just need to focus on math, unfortunately, but I feel would we'll be able to do um, the rough. I like to hope to get it. Well, math can be also really fun. I, I did like math quite a bit and if you go into uh, Engineering, design engineering, you're going to also learn a lot about mechanics and uh, stuff like that, which is actually 
slightly complicated, but then again, it's also really fun. On this, until you get to fluid mechanics, because fluid mechanics just did not, did not work for me at all. Okay, this is quite a bit higher than the other one, and also a bit too far, I feel like. So let's fix that up. There we go. That, uh, that feels a bit better. Um, yes, I use Sketchbook. I actually I don't know what the Pro stands for anymore, because technically it's not Pro, because they changed the name and they took away the subscription from the Pro, and now it seems that they brought it back. I, I, I don't understand how that works, because this is still the, the free version, but apparently there is a pro version that is paid and that you are uh, subscribed to. Um, <laughs> iPad versus Cintiq. It really depends on what you need or, or, or what you want. I have both for, I, I prefer to work on my Cintiq when it comes to, to, to general work stuff but I prefer my iPad if I just want to chill and hang out on my couch or draw something. And also for work, if, if, if I need to go to my client, which obviously now during Corona times and all the lockdowns doesn't happen, but then I just take my iPad with me because it's much more comfortable than carrying a laptop and the Cintiq and then setting all the cables and everything up at the, the, the client. I did that before. So I, I had a time where I didn't have a Cintiq, I didn't have an iPad. And I, I carry the laptop and the th my 13 inch uh, decent peak with me. And that's quite a hassle, let me tell you. Okay, I'm not gonna use the ellipse tool because Spencer from <laughs> Sketch a Day would be angry at me. And we don't want that. So I'm just gonna do hand-drawn ellipses, even though they're quite horrendous. And that's why you should warm up. Not like what I did here, and put out the warm-up. Okay, we're gonna cheat, duplicate this a little bit, adjust. There we go. That's quite fine. And then... This is sort of not a leather, but I imagine it as a, as a fabric belt going around it there and also here. <clears throat> oh, I see my, I hear my voice slipping. So I take a sip of water. <clears throat> Narayana, I am currently working in IT industry, but I was always keen and inclined towards product design, automotive design. I was wondering if it is okay to be a hobbyist designer. Would love to know your view. Of course it is okay. It's like, it's, it's the best. <laughs> because then you can do whatever you want in your free time. There's nothing wrong with that. And also like, I am sort of like a, a hobbyist designer because my, my day job is more on the corporate level. I, I do other stuff that is not really what one would think when people think of industrial design. And then I do all the, the industrial design stuff for myself when I just come up with uh, furniture and stuff like that. Hmm. I'm gonna add maybe some sort of thing was welded here. And the belt goes to that. Let's give some texture to the belt. And the same thing here as well. So we have these sort of latches. I wouldn't even know what to call them. But these are like bolted or welded to our uh, external canisters. And then things here. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I don't think uh, Feng Zhu still uses a vacuum into his pro. Yeah, exactly, and he uses some some version of Photoshop as well. It's it's really the you know it's it's the same thing. When I was younger, I 
I sucked at photography and I wanted to be better, so I also bought a better uh, camera. And then I learned that uh, no matter how good the camera, I still suck at photography. So it's it's the same thing with drawing. It's it's about learning to draw, and whatever tools you want to use, though, doesn't matter. They don't matter because it's your ability to draw that matters. And of course, you can prefer some tools uh, if you get used to them, but don't uh, base what you want to, to do on, uh, on what sort of tools you have. Because you can do amazing stuff with just a uh, pencil and paper as well. So this is some sort of contraption back here on the side for a little off-road vehicle. Uh, have you ever experienced that you designed any kind of products but someone else did it in the past and you felt like it's almost a copy, like it was not about... Well, yeah, but that's the ideating part, right? Whenever uh, you want to come up with something, you sit down and you ideate all sorts of products. Afterward, you also check like what, what makes sense. And you also do research at the same time, what, what already exists out there. You, the, the, the phase of ideation is basically there to get bad ideas, not just bad ideas, but in general, all sorts of crazy ideas out of your head. And among those ideas, there can be a lot of things that already exist. But the good thing is, if you put it on paper, if you put it on post-its, you don't need to, to sketch it necessarily. Just get it out of your head. And once it's out, then you can concentrate on other new ideas. So don't feel bad or weird about coming up with stuff that other people already came up with. It's just how we humans function. Obviously, don't take credit for other, other people's designs, but don't feel bad knowing that already other people came up with those designs. Just move on. Maybe, maybe see what you like about those and incorporate some ideas into your own stuff. You can do that as well. Uh, hey Robert, I'm thinking about buying markers for sketching and coloring and I was wondering how many I should buy to start with because I don't want to buy too little. I, there, is, there is no too little, man. Uh, so, they can be quite expensive, especially the, the branded ones, the Copic ones. What I would suggest, since, since you're also Dutch, uh, go to Action. And, and they are the, the twin markers in action. And they should be super cheap. Like you can get three for one euro, I think, or a, a, a pack of 12 for three euros, something like that. And yeah, they are not good quality, but at least you can learn how to use them properly and you can get quite a bit of use out of them. And then after that, you can look for more branded ones I don't know what you have in uh, in your city where you live, but in general, Copics are always, they are the most expensive one, also the best ones. You can look for Pro Markers. I like Stylefile, like I ordered them online, but now I can find them here in the local, my local thing as well. They are quite nice and, and relatively cheap as well. Are you following any vanishing lines for this drawing? It doesn't appear so. Would this make the drawing not truly isometric? If it doesn't, how do you control proportions? Uh, well, I am following vanishing lines because... Uh, let me bring in a new layer. So I'm looking at the, at the ground where the wheels touch it. Uh, let me give this a red. This is the red. And then let me take away the roof. This is the roof. Now, if I take away the drawing completely, see, these go towards a vanishing point somewhere all the way, I don't know, somewhere back there. And also, if you look at this side, 
Uh, so let me just draw a vertical line. If you put a point here, this is the roof. Then this is the hood. Still the hood. And we start moving a little bit upwards. A little bit more upwards. And then if we look at the, the wheels again. There. Take away the drawing. See, these also go towards the vanishing line. It's just, uh, I explained this already a couple of times, is that I, I don't draw... Uh, uh -uh. Oh no, please don't crash. Uh, okay, what do we have? Flare sketching. 2021-01-14. Save. Let's see if it crashes. No, okay, good. <laughs> Okay, so as I said, I'm not drawing the, the horizon line and then putting down vanishing points and then drawing my thing because I just don't like that. What I like to use is I just draw a cue in perspective, which is in, in a three-point perspective. And I already know that these go towards the vanishing line. So instead of looking for the vanishing lines, what I do, I just try to draw lines that follow the, the lines of my cube and they sort of stay in perspective. So I, I'm trying to push all my lines towards the same vanishing line only by adjusting the angle that is between these lines. So that, that's, that's how I approach uh, drawing. Okay. Uh, do you use Scott Robertson technique from the book how to draw in all of your drawings? Uh, probably. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest though, I, I don't have that book uh, because I suck much more at uh, rendering. I have his rendering book. So I guess what Scott Robertson teaches is just general what they teach you in industrial design schools. So I think I, I, I follow the same techniques but not necessarily from his book. They're a nice and beefy front tire. I like that quite a bit, I must say. Okay. Then we need, okay, where's my, I need my reference picture here a little bit. Let's bring it over to this side. So we have a thicker one down here, this connects there, and then a thinner one reaching up there. There we go. Hopefully that, that sort of is function. Uh, is this for the challenge on Discord? Yes, it is Radici. It is for the Discord challenge, indeed. But I wanted to do a more futuristic one as well, like Mass Effect one. But I feel like this is taking up quite a bit of time and I might just stick with this one because I do enjoy it. Let's bring this one back here. <laughs> How long do you, your drawing take typically? Well, it depends what I'm drawing, right? <laughs> if, I, if I'm drawing humans, it takes forever because I'm not that good with humans. Robots, machines, mechs. If I know them, then it takes a bit shorter. Especially if I do cheats like this. I'm gonna take this wheel. And since I already have it once, there's no reason to draw it again. So I'm just gonna copy paste it, erase some areas, and just draw some areas back. There we go. And now I'm just gonna merge it down. Problem solved. So this speeds up things. It, 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 it really also depends, like, especially when you're working for a client, then you know that, okay, 
the client has budget for, for this amount of hours. And I can't really go over that. So I, I need to finish the drawing in this amount of time, which means that I know I, I need to cut corners here or there, or I am not supposed to go that much into detail. Like this, so for example here, like I was supposed to, I wanted to do two drawings in this stream. Uh, and I, I probably, I wouldn't have done a line layer. So I would probably just take um, this base drawing and just draw on this. I just not really clean it up, just keep on drawing, maybe clean it up a little bit here and there. Drawing a, a whole new layer, not the smartest thing to do if you want to do two drawings, a live stream. So I just decided, okay, we're probably just going to stick with this one. But then I'm also going to put maybe a bit more effort into this one and just in general have more fun with it. Not that I wouldn't have fun with a, a Mass Effect type of vehicle either, because I still like the idea. And we might do that another time. So there's a lot, bunch of detail that's probably off with this bike here, but uh, we don't care that much right now. So, I don't know what is higher. Okay. So we have a couple of things here. Maybe that as well. Uh, other questions? Thank you for clarifying. Love it. The combining the bike with the thing was not my idea. Not taking... Oh, why did I take this away? I'm not going to take any credit for that. I really like that idea as well. That's why I'm executing it. Okay. I feel like this round the thing should be a little bit lower. Okay, I think we're done with the bike because I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm fiddling too much with detail here that are not needed. We got the way. All right. Um, So I need a little bit of this holder for my bike, which is some sort of steel construction. Goes there. Like this would be cool actually as, as, as an industrial designer. Like you could, the, the whole project could be just, okay, if we have a bike, what is the easiest, coolest way to uh, attach it? to the side of, of, of a vehicle like this. Oh, I want this to be somewhat, well, here. And then maybe rotate my bike a little bit. Yeah, I feel that works. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into too much detail. Oh, music is gone. Sick. Yes, please continue. Please. Uh, Robert, do you have any tips for drawing faster? Um, not really. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm, th I'm thinking, I'm thinking about what would be a, a good tip for drawing faster. I would say time yourself. So that's, that's, that's what uh, I do studies from time to time. And I always set myself a, a timer. And because I know that I have 30, 30 minutes to finish a study, then I, I force myself to, to make decisions and to cut corners. And the more you think like that, the more you 
get used to the idea of like okay what 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 is important information what needs to be drawn and what is not important information because that's that's the main thing that i would say as an advice Is there any chance for free or for money to have a consultation with you or isn't your place to give some advice to you? Well, this, this is the place or my this. But I, I gladly give some feedback if you, if you have a drawing. If you have a specific question about something that you're drawing or you're not understanding, I gladly help or uh, a lot of people on, on Discord give really, really good advice as well. So I, I would uh, recommend that. Do you have any tips on drawing planes? Uh, yes, do studies. Like what sort of planes do you like? What sort of planes do you want to draw? I would say look at look at the planes that you you like, and and try to draw them more. Like also what 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 do you like about planes? What sort of planes did you draw already? There's there's a lot of things that you can improve. Why why do you think you want tips on drawing planes? Like what do you think you're not drawing that well at the moment? What, what do you not under... Oh, this is not good. This is not good because usually the thing is like this and then comes through like this. There we go. Like this, see, this is cutting time. Like this detail would be not important at all. The, the drawing this lock here. But for some reason, I decided that I'm going to draw a lock here. This is uh, silly of me. So let's move on. <laughs> Okay. This is the way pass. That's it. Uh, we're, 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 we're making progress. We're making progress. Most jets. Why? Well, hard to give specific tips on, on something like jets because I'm I'm not necessarily a, an, an airplane drawer but whenever I need to draw a jet I just I make sure to pull up some reference because I'm just not that familiar with planes just just like I wasn't that familiar with with bikes right so I needed a, a, a cross bike and here's the reference so I, I make sure to look at it So that's that's the one thing that I would suggest for sure. Always, always look at the reference what you want to draw. Yeah, I know I should put some lashes on the bike. I know. <laughs> I was I was just lazy. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, let me let me merge this down. Before I go back to the bike, I want to do the tires first. Okay, one, two, go back. Okay, let's try to keep the tire as clean as possible. And that is not a good ellipse. Uh, still not a good ellipse. Not a good ellipse. Not a good ellipse. <laughs> This could take all night, guys. So we're gonna be here drawing ellipses for this wheel. Okay, screw it. Okay, I want it like that. I mean, it's 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 not perfect, but I can sort of live with this. Wow, I did not want to push that away. This is just Spencer annoying me with his 
sketch a day thing because I talked to him once and he was like, nah man, I never use the lip stool. It's all freehand. And I'm like, oh, screw me. <laughs> now, now I need to live up the Spencer as well with my freehand ellipses. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring up the cars in the Discord. Uh, copy image, just so I can have the wheels a bit as a reference. There we go. Uh, let's give some depth with a little bit of cross hatching here. Let's blacken it up. And then the same thing below, just to show where the whole thing turns. Let's make it a bit more comfortable for my hands. There we go. And now add these nice little... There we go. Mm. I want to make it a bit more functional. There we go, I think that might... Yeah. Alright. I like that. Um, let's see what else that is. Have you gone through Scott Robertson's exercises? How are you trained to be an industrial designer? I did not go through Scott. Well, I, I did follow a couple of his free tutorials, but I studied industrial design at the university. And I'm, I'm pretty sure what Scott Robertson teaches and what I teach as well is just sort of the basics, what they, what they teach you uh, at uh, industrial design schools. So I guess that's why you find similarities between uh, what I'm doing and Scott Robertson stuff. So it's, it's, it's just a general industrial design type of, of drawing that they teach you. Oh, this is getting dirty, not as clean as I wanted it to. Come on. Okay, okay. I feel like I brought it back a bit. Let me just make sure to give it I feel like it doesn't need to be this strong there. It could be just, I don't know. It still should have a little bit of this edge there. Let's give it a little bit of roundness here. Our reference image can go away. And now give some 3D to these threads, just give that edge a little bit and then as we go down the edge comes from below to above and then the same thing here, give it that edge and the closer it comes to the camera it sort of switches position. Okay, and now that we have this wheel, just gonna cheat and copy paste it to the back as well and copy paste it to this side as well. Only difference here is that this one I would make it a little bit more wide like that because it's on the other side also smaller of course. I'm gonna move this a little bit higher. Sure I could move it a little bit higher as well. Yeah what happened? Oh yeah, a different layer. Duh! Okay, there we go. Still different layer. Wow. 
that was a fail. Don't tell anybody that I did that twice in a row. Okay, so what we have to do here, obviously we have to change because the inside of the wheel is going to look a bit different. So from what I understand from wheels, uh, you have some sort of, so you have the central axis here, then you have the uh, spring area here and you also have the steering mechanism. But usually this is this is black. Well black, it's in shadow. I'm quite black. There we go. So I'm just gonna suggest some mechanisms here. I know that there's a steer steering mechanism there and the rest we don't really care about that much. I said we don't need to go into too much detail here. All right, we can. I would say we can merge this down, bring back the car, and we can also erase the areas that are not necessary. That whole area. And this area is covered. That area is gone. And then back wheel. There we go. That's not visible. That's not visible. Our bike is also covering a big part of the back wheel. Something like that. There we go. I can live with that. I can live with them. Oh, wait, no. Here we need to clean up these lines a little bit. So these pipes nicely cover our back wheel as well. Okay, let's see new questions. Uh, I love seeing people take five tries to get it right. Makes me feel normal. Oh, five, five is, is little. <laughs> I take usually more than five. <laughs> uh, okay, thanks so much because I'm drawing uh, Shinzen's plane. It looks like a jet, but it's a prop plane. Yeah, man, just pay attention. I mean, I don't know the, the plane exactly, but I mean, I can, let, let's do a quick, I'm gonna do a quick check on the plane, just so we have a, a quick pause from our uh, car here. Let's see what this is. Oh, this is an old, uh, an old type plane. Ah, it's a really cool one. I like it, I like it. I like this picture. Okay, let's let's do a quick sketch of this clip while we're doing other stuff. Copy image. It's a pretty cool plane. So what I would what I would do it's just deconstruct it and, and, and take it element by element. Uh, let's push this. Let's push the airplane a little bit to the side. So you have sort of a central element. I'm drawing an axis. And then it goes a little bit like this. And then if we do the Scott Robertson thing, we can sort of divide it into these parts right something like that and then here uh, you, it becomes a bit bigger something like this when it goes back there and then here you would have the cockpit cockpit is a little bit sharper I think like this and then you have i think these are stabilizers in the front like usually the airplanes have these stabilizers in the back and then obviously they also go the other so they taper to, from the outside and here as well something like that and then you have the wing area here 
and also on the other side over there. And if I would draw them straight, they would be somewhere here. Like this, but they are not straight, they go back. I'll put it there and put it here. And then I just do the connections. And here as well, from there and from there. And then you can make this whole thing just a bit darker. Like that, and here as well. Then you have these extra little, I don't know what this would be called, things there. And then you have a bit of a more, see, so this becomes a bit round here. Make sure to make that a bit palpable. It's roundness here. And then the end, you have this nice little, because it's a propeller that and it has one two three four five six probably so one two three four five six there, there. so just close these off something like this right Like, I might have made the nose a bit long, but it's all right. And then, oh. You can always adjust your lines a little bit afterwards, because the, the structure now is in, so that the structure is understandable. And now you can adjust your lines for it quite a bit. Like here, this is a bit bent. I just noticed that, so that it has a bend to it. And like this would be the proper line to follow. I'm just gonna do the cross hatch like that. And this sort of goes in. I, I just noticed. And then we have, so it sort of disappears there. And then we have another little air intake thing here. Yeah, something like this. It's quite a cool plane. But yeah, so as I said, just build build the structure. Like, yeah, take a look at some <laughs> Scott Robertson tutorials, I would say, or some of mine. I have a couple talking about structure as well. And then, uh, yeah, this is how you draw the plane. Okay, let's return to our vehicle. Which is uh, getting closer to being done. Okay, we talked about the need for those straps, right? For the bike. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, let's say we have sort of a lock here. So you can open this up. And then I would say I would put something here as well. And then let me take the sketch away because it's a bit annoying now. There we go. This is better. So we have a strap here. Let's put a buckle on it. There and then let's put one there as well from the same position. Goes up there. There we go. And then obviously this is behind that bar and this is also behind that bar and the buckle here should be a little bit lower i would say you can also emphasize that this is a bit like that 
And here, if you want this one, can be on the upper side. Doesn't really talk to me. There we go. Uh, and we want to make sure that it doesn't go left or right either. Yeah, I would say let's do this. Just some chain holding it down there. So this, this maybe maybe you could weld these things on the bike, and you just hook them in there, so it doesn't swiggle. And then you could have one final hook down here, and that could go, let's say, somewhere here. And now somebody in the chat. Let's see, who was the big mouth? <laughs> uh, Mr. Manuel Herrera can't run his mouth and tell me that my bike is not uh, fixed in proper, properly anymore. There we go. Just kidding, of course. I appreciate all these inputs. Okay, so now we can erase uh, the parts that are below the belt and shouldn't be visible. Like that part and that part. And then push back. Yeah. Okay, so now, because this belt is on top of everything, I need it to pop. So we talk a lot about line weight means I'm just gonna come over it and make it a little bit darker in the outlines to give it this extra thickness and it will be a bit over the bike see that's already it's already popping nicely uh, did I miss questions let's see uh, why do you prefer sketchbook over Photoshop at the line step uh, two things one I do like the the brushes sketchbook it remind me a lot of paper sketching i don't know why even though it's very digital it's not paper at all but i just i just line the like the lines in sketchbook more and i'm too lazy to to set up a brush in photoshop that emulates something that i would like more and two it's a free app so a lot of you guys who don't have photoshop or don't want to pay uh, 10 bucks a month just to get photoshop you can use this app for free. So I would say it's worth pushing it a little bit in that case. Um, hey Robert, if you look in this code, you will see finished. Okay, I will take a look after we're done. He'll uh, <laughs> be definitely a fantasy play next time, multiple wings. I. Uh, Look up Crimson Skies. So I'm not going to look that up now, but just for you guys, you should take a look at Crimson Skies. I'm a huge fan of Crimson Skies. And uh, I did draw a bunch of planes like those when I was younger. I was really into that universe. Uh, so this is sort of... Go and let's do the dish satellite dish thing as well. Uh, meanwhile, I know I shouldn't worry about how long it takes, but how long do you think it takes to get to your level of skill? It, it really depends how much work you put in. Like it, it really depends on you. Like the, the more you draw, the, the better you get, but it's also not just blind drawing, it's also like targeted. Like what are you drawing, Try, what are you trying to learn from it, how much study time do you put into it, you know? Uh, I don't know if you guys know Dave Raposa, uh, but... If I remember correctly, for the longest time, he just uh, said goodbye to the real world and moved somewhere with his girlfriend. 
and he didn't socialize almost at all with people. He was just drawing, 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 trying to get better. And uh, he just blew up. He went, he became crazy good. So I also decided, hey, I can do that as well. So one of these winters, since I hate winters and I don't really go out anyways during winters, I was also drawing crazy, crazy much. And I saw the, I saw the, the results. Like I, I really could see how, how much I evolved. The only problem was that uh, when spring arrived, and I felt like, hey, it would be cool to hang out with my friends. I realized that every time when my friends called me during winter, I, I just didn't want to go. I wanted, I was busy. And then all of a sudden, spring realized that, hey, my friends are not calling me out anymore. And they added new people to the friends groups. And I didn't like that. So then you have to decide for yourself if it's worth putting in that, that crazy amount of hours and totally giving up on social life. So it is, it is, what I'm trying to say, it is a nice, bel no, not nice, but in general, it is a balance game that you have to do if how much, how much work you put into draw. Because yeah, it, it takes time to get better. And it's not just gonna happen by itself. But drawing is also not everything. You do have a life outside of drawing and you shouldn't give up. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't, you do what you want, but you have to decide what is more important for you in the end. Okay. I could add some hinges here just to give, since we have the lock there, then we could add some hinges here. Add something there. Some minor detail work <laughs> there as well. Like this, I could blacken on because we don't really see much. There. Just like that. Okay. Oh yeah, the the front, the front of it, this area. Okay. okay. Let me read a little bit more what you guys have here. Uh, bye, Corey. Thanks for uh, jumping in. How to start with industrial sketching if I'm new? Should I use a book? Well, if you find books on it, yeah, it always helps. Otherwise, if you check my videos, there is a fundamental industrial design fundamentals. If you go a little bit further back uh, on my videos, so they, those should help you as well. Uh, you will paint this truck? I don't know yet. I will definitely not do it today, <laughs> but I, I might do it in the future. Today I will just finish the line work, probably add a bit more shadows and textures here and there. And that will be it. Yeah, this is black area as well. Okay, so once we're done with this, I'm going to the front of the truck, and then we're going to do a little bit of cross hatching and texture work here and there, just to just to give it a little bit more life, because otherwise, right now, it's going to be a bit too um, sterile, and you don't want it to be that sterile. So as I said, we still have the lights here something like this so this would be one two should i take a look no nothing special well i could take a look at this one i'm gonna I only want to take a, ooh, what on earth was that? I only care about the headlights. So I'm gonna raise everything and bring this a little bit closer.
and then try to get some of that information here. Well, it's not such a not such a special headlight in the end after all, so I didn't even need that. Oh yeah, the grill I didn't do at all. That would be nice to do as well. Hello, do you have an iPad? If so, would you recommend it? I do have an iPad and I would recommend it if you're using it professionally to draw or if you have a whole bunch of money. Because to get an iPad just for drawing, it's quite a bit expensive. I, I think I waited like two years before I finally decided to get an iPad. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm very happy I got one, but unless you're using it on a daily basis, I'm not sure it's worth the investment. Noodled around with that a little bit. Uh, let's give this a hint of how how you would open it. Maybe something this. And then oh, have a cut here. bit there so this would be the hinge that opens the hood or bonnet wherever you're from whatever works better for you merge down Uh, probably I would in my third year as a student and my current Huyun is partly failing. Well, yeah, but a Huyun you can get for uh, 200, 300 bucks and an iPad costs a thousand, uh, over a thousand bucks. So yeah, it's still a huge difference. On the iPad, I mostly use uh, Procreate, not Sketchbook and procreate is a one-time purchase of i think 10 euros it was or 10 dollars I'm, I'm not sure which one it's not too expensive and definitely worth it i also like the the the, the sketchbook app on ipad but i do prefer the procreate app it just feels more native on a touch screen Um, still need a winch in the front. Honestly, I'm, I'll have to look up winch because I have no idea what it is. My brain is a little bit mushy at the moment. Oh, winch, of course, I wanted to add that before. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me actually do this on a new layer. There we go. Here is this. Do it here. Yeah, I wanted to edit the winch in the beginning. That's why I also had this big platform for it here. And then 
I totally forgot about it. to to the stream so I see what you guys are saying. And we could also add since I'm here. Let me merge this one down. I would say a uh, fog lamps. Would be good to have as well. Especially since somebody was so smart and designed an asymmetric setup for the headlights. It wasn't me. I can tell you that much. Okay, and to save some time, just copy paste this, make it a little bit bigger. And then add some sort of correction there. Yeah, I, I, if I was smart, I would have uh, drawn the contraption and then copy pasted. But uh, we're not about smart being smart on this channel. Okay, and then let's not forget the winch Eden. Now, don't uh, attack me if the winch is not 100% correct. I'm not looking at reference right now. But that's what you get if you're not looking at reference. I'm giving you a... Oh, that's a bit off there. Let's move this so it's in the center. Yeah, not that. That's better. Okay, erase everything that's below it. Is this the line? Let's get rid of these in there. I have to check nothing to erase there. There we go. Same thing again. I am going to make the lines a little bit thicker just so it pops and it's understandable that it's in front of the things. Same with this. You can also add a little bit of cross hatching here because that's in shadow. And you can do the same thing here. Uh, I can change the shape of this a little bit. I decided I'm going to give it just a little bit of sort of a skirt here going over like that. There we go. Uh, this one I wanted it to have sort of like a cap here. And then maybe there's like a, a weld here. This was welded together so the fuel can flow from one into the other. All right, add a bit more texture to this one here. Oh, we're coming towards the end here I like that <laughs> window can be a bit shaded as well and now you can also think of stuff like okay maybe there's some corrosion here here and there somewhere and there stuff like or even even just mud a little bit of dirt specks you can also add uh, maybe it was going fast and it threw up some rocks and the rocks can do some dents or somebody kicked the door, there are some dents in it, and then just general 
dirt here and there. And it's nice to add the, uh, stuff like this. Once again, the shadow here, it's at an angle. This also, I would say, is in a shadow area. So we can sort of go in here. These steps, they need a button, which can be a bit darker. I feel like the front could use some sort of emblem. I'm going to go with a sickle and a hymn. Good old communist thing. Give it even a stone. There you go. It's a nice communist thing and there's some rust around it. There you go. I like that. Let me take another sip and then let's see if we're done with that. Who are you calling a winch, eh? Are you calling me a winch? Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, the same thing. So now I, I go back and say, okay, so there's areas like this that are a bit in shadow. So this can take a little bit of cross hatching as well. Just to bring everything together, have this uh, sort of similar texture to the whole drawing. Go. Uh, so we have this contraption up here that it, it needs some sort of similarities I would say below as well doesn't need to make necessarily sense but I just want it to be understandable uh, we could have a little bit of shadow here as well I'm gonna add some more cross hatching there What else? So I didn't really finish the back part of it. Let me see if I had an idea and a sketch for it. No, so I sort of neglected it. I just know that it's so, sort of ends somewhere there. Uh, so we can add a little bit of detail work as well. Maybe you have some section lines there for it. Uh, the roof needs a darkening. We can add some more shadow here as well because the solar panels throw some shadow there. Obviously the, the bottom of our satellite should be relatively in shade. And then you could do the whole window here. Uh, I'm just putting it on the new layer. And I'm doing also the area where our driver is. I'm just taking the eraser and erasing the area where the bars are. Just like that. Wait a little bit. Clean up the bars. And then clean up both sides of the window area. There we go. Uh, what you can also, you can think of small usability things. So if, if you have greasy hands and you keep on opening the door, so you have sort of like, you can add some grease flex here, or you can also think that the, the, the painting is a bit more chipped there. All right, so you, you can think like how it's, how something like this is used. In general, corners get, get used quite fast. You have more wear and tear where you have corners. And then once again, I can come back in and make sure that all the lines that are sort of closer to the bottom or are on the bottom get a bit darker because that's, that's my shadow area. And everything that's down here is going to be in shadow as well. So I'm just gonna give it a cross hatch down here as well. And then we're gonna zoom out 
Yeah, that looks relatively... This, this area looks a little bit bare. So what I'm going to do is just add a bit of a construction here. And maybe also section line, show some internal area there. Just to make it a bit more interesting. Uh, this area should be dirty. You can also just go with a little bit of illustratory sort of. I don't know if it's called cross hatching if I just add these lines. Yeah. I like that actually. Comma three. Okay, I like that. Okay, let me see why. Let me find it. So it has a play, pluck, pluck, play. I don't know how to say it. Pluck. Let's see. There. And there it says. I mean, if I something like this would be a good old schoolish. Comma three. There we go. Yeah, some weren't there here, and we can add some more. But yeah, this is, I think I think we can call this sort of done. I'm definitely not gonna do the futuristic version since I spent. I went way more into detail with this one. Uh, the sun roof, the solar panel sort of throws a shadow. So I would say let's do that shadow. So. There we go. And then obviously also for the bike, you can sort of give the bike a shadow, even though it, it wouldn't make too much sense. But in this case, since I didn't really add detail for the car there, this will help make that area a little bit more interesting as well. Uh, and then obviously you can also follow the, the roundness, the lines of these canisters and sort of accentuate that a little bit. Here you can also make the underlines of this a bit thicker. Yeah. I think we're, uh, we're coming to the end with this one. Uh, one thing I could still do is make a copy of one of the wheels. Oh, well, actually. Uh, no, that was a good one. And move it back here, compress it a little bit, make it smaller. I guess it would be somewhere there. If I zoom out. Yeah, I guess there. Just erase everything I don't need. And make sure that this is quite in shadow. So I go over quite a bit of cross hatch and then just give the whole vehicle a bit more of a just a drop shadow it doesn't need to be perfect or precise this is more for for graphical reasons to ground the vehicle let me let me put it on a new layer there we go And then just erase everything that's not visible. And then you can also just, voila, there was no need for erase it, so I'm going back again. But sometimes I do extra work for, so for no reason at all. Okay, and now just going into the tire, erase all those extra shadow lines that we don't need.
merge it down a bit. Yeah, I think I am going to stop here for the evening. Well, this, this could go on. I, I mean, you, you can add details forever and ever because it's it's just fun. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stop it now. Well, yeah, thank you everybody very much for joining in. And I hope you enjoyed this little uh, off the grid vehicle that we designed here. And uh, yeah, please join the Discord if you want to engage more with the community. We have really fun stuff going on there. Check my back catalog of videos if, if you want to learn. There's, there's a lot of industrial design stuff that I do. And uh, just in general, have a great time and probably see you uh, in the next video. Okay, good night. Bye-bye, everybody.